So it looks like we're back. And let me just do a few changes to the render settings or the uh, preview settings. So I'll enable uh, the viewport shading and go here to the render tab. And I'll switch from EV2 cycles and set the GPU compute. And now when I go back, so I have this terrain selected. When I go back to the modifiers list and when I enable this switch, I will see where we left off. And I think the, the light is too bright. Maybe like so. Okay, this does look kind of cool. Let's do another render. Press F12. I still have to decide if I'll have the guest object visible in a scene. Maybe we can design another one. We'll see. We're still going to talk about uh, the new tools in Terrain Mixer, which will help us design this terrain. But while we're watching this test render, let me just explain how does the printing work, especially uh, resin printing. I don't know how familiar you are with the 3D printing. Uh, the idea is to have an object. Let's say that we want to print this uh, this one so in a 3d printer especially resin 3d printer you have a vat like so where the resin is so this is the resin imagine that this is the resin some kind of liquid then you have the plate printer plate which has some kind of a knob here so you can take it off when you're done with printing and what happens is that uh, this plate is moving downwards all the way to inside this sweat and it prints layers so the first layer is you know glued or sticked or cured on this plate and then the next layer and the next layer and the next layer and so on and uh, what's cool with uh, this type of terrains is that if we oriented our model to be printed like this so imagine that this is our model that will be printed uh, we won't have any overhangs which means that we might pull this thing off even without support i can't promise but it's possible because the widest layer will be printed first and all the other layers uh, will be printed after it and then we won't have any overhangs any parts that go like this because when you have something like this then you need the uh, support for it yeah we'll see if we can pull this off like this so let's close this going back to the new tools i go through the list here let's go to mask nodes and i'll turn the guest object switch off so we don't see it I won't go through every single tool here. We can we can test a few. So, for example, this uh, linear gradient mask. Let's see what we can do to, with it. I have this input in purple, and I have this input here in purple as well. This means that it is related to uh, terrain's mapping, and terrain's mapping is based on UV layout. So I can use this to my benefit, because if I add uh, this link here, let's call it like that, this, this, this dot, and I plug it here, I inherited this UV mapping on this linear gradient mask as well. So if I now press Shift A and type mix color, I can combine these two and I know already that it will match this terrain mapping. So if I view it from the top by pressing 7, I see the terrain as a square plate. Now if I plug it here, you will see that something happened. And here there are some things that I can change like uh, intensity minus one plus one zero uh i can invert it sometimes the effect is not so obvious because it's just the inverted value depends on the structure of your terrain then i can change the angle you see the rotation i can enable y angle which means that i can rotate it on the y axis okay then we have smooth gradient switch and we can change the value of it so we can kind of get convex or concave type of curve that affects the terrain so that's just one of the masks here all the others uh, work on a similar principle so i won't go through all of them but okay let's for example test this one and plug this here and then plug this here you see then we can play with canyon we can change the influence deformation definition sorry invert it make it sharper 
blur, change the angle on y, on z axis, offset, and so on. So uh, you have noticed that I'm using this uh, mask tools for mapping here, and that's optional because you see there's no mask input here, right? But uh, if I combine this with mixer nodes, for example, and add this mixer here, and then plug this to the A socket, plug this to the A socket, remove this, so I can duplicate this terrain with the control shift D, so I can keep this connection, change some parameters here, for example, I can make it weaker, like so, and then maybe scale it down a bit, like so, and even change the angle to 90, and then plug it here, you see what happens, we can even use the exclusion blending option, if it was mixed, uh, the input would work. Let's have it like this. And now if I plug the mask here and enable mask switch and increase mask factor, nothing will change. But if I do this, something will change. So it works better with the, with the mix option. And now I can continue where we left off. You know, I can change this uh, value, change the angle offset. So you see, this is cool because now I have one terrain on top and the other on the bottom. So I'm combining them with this uh, mask. You can do the same with almost any tool that has this purple mapping input available. You don't have to use this for mapping, of course, but you can. One thing that is uh, important to remember, you have this uh, viewer node here enabled. If I press 7 and watch the terrain from the top, you can always preview uh, the current value of uh, what you have mixed. So this is very useful for maps, especially for maps. So if I plug this here and just have to click on it to enable it and click back to disable it. So if I preview through this viewer node, you can see the shape of your mask, which is uh, very useful sometimes. Right away, you can see here what you're doing, right? And when you think that you're on the right path, you go back here and just uh, disable it and preview what you got. And now we can change the values between these two, you know, we can uh, affect the mask masking factor, input switch won't work in this situation, but it will now, okay. So let's move forward, we have object nodes, this is the same thing, so you drop it here, and then you define the object that you'll be using for the guest object. We use this call base scale object. You have seen this already, so uh, I won't use it now. This is uh, more useful when you're starting with with this terrain base simple, or uh, or even with the with the just cube. You know, power nodes. This is similar, and in a way that you that it affects uh, the mapping. Oh, you can use it as a mask as well. But let me let me show you what I'm talking about. So let me drag and drop this distort distortion master. And now what I can do, okay, let's bring back the mix node, mix these two, and now plug it here into the strength node to preview the terrain that we have at the moment. Now I can mix these two with this one to affect their mapping, but I won't do it here. I will do it here. So let me show you what I mean. I will plug it into the vector socket and do this. And then I'll drag from here, type mix, color because color since it has rgb which are equivalent to red green and blue it's basically a vector so now we can plug it here for example and here okay change this from color to mix and now you see that things are getting a bit weird here which is what we want so now if i change this factor you will see how it affects uh, the mapping of the terrain you see and we don't have to affect the, the both of these terrains. We can do this, then have combined this distorted mapping with the regular one, like so, and change the blending type to maybe add, and change the strength as well as the scale. And also we can change the blending of mapping. Also, we can change the distortion of the noise, so it's like this. And if we preview and try to render this, disable this switch and press F12, we'll see that we have something quite interesting. 
you see so we have combined these expected terrain elements with these weird looking shapes on top of it and since we're talking about weird shapes we can go through some of these other nodes such as stepper nodes maybe cracks dry waves which are useful for uh, sand and also this rocker node al always adds a lot of pronounced or subtle details which help us uh, make the terrain more believable.